together. Good, that's uh, useful. <laughs> to uh, uh, together the Finance and Audit Committee meeting for Thursday, August 6, 2021. And uh, public opportunities to discuss matters of public interest within the committee's scope, including items on or not on the agenda. Are provided. Are there any speakers? So I do not have anyone coming in advance. Or is there anybody else on the call? Uh, there is one phone number here. Oh, caller, uh, you're able to unmute yourself if there's anything you'd like to present to the board at this time. No response. No one there? Mm -hmm. uh, moving then to uh, the consent agenda. Um, and uh, consent agenda is acted upon with one or less the committee members request a separate discussion. Are there any such requests? Moved. And do we have a motion for moving the agenda? Mr. Chair, I'll move the consent. Do we have a motion? Do we have a second? Uh, would the clerk please call the roll? Director Rosali? Aye. Wood? Aye. Motion passes. Moving then to presentation items. Finance report through uh, June 30, 2021, with interim CFO Ken Kemper. Yep. Thank you. That's Chair Rosali. We have a PowerPoint presentation that Art is calling up there. So we finally made it to the end of the fiscal year. So we have the June, June 30 report for you. Here we go. So again, this is the uh, Financial report uh, for the period ended June 30, 2021, for the 12 months uh, ended. So, next slide, Art. So, this is uh, the MEDIC uh, cost recovery uh, slide. I think you're uh, familiar with these uh, slides. You can see um, our actual revenues uh, for the year. This is on a still on a cash basis, so we haven't gone. Then the year in the pools. It usually happens sometime in uh, September. Is we'll be looking at the revenues collected in uh, July, August, and September that relate back to the uh, April, May, June uh, periods. So we go at uh, the accrual process of the year. But as of uh, uh, this day, uh, actual revenues of about forty-one point eight million compared to budget uh, forty-one point million. So. Um, Transport activity and revenues have been taken up. We uh, moved out of uh, 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 last last year, and uh, you know during the pandemic there was uh, probably about a 30 35 percent drop in transport activity, and that's been uh, slowly uh, picking up. Um, I'll point out you see the flat line there, the green line for June of uh, last year, represents is that year end accrual that I was talking about. Uh, so last year, because the activity was going down, when we compare the, um, the year-end activity with the previous, it was, uh, it was down quite a bit. So there was actually uh, a, a negative accrual that, that happened because the accrual amount less than the year before. So it kind of wiped out the revenue for uh, June of last year. You get the red line, which represents uh, the actual um, Transport collections for this year, you know, it's continuing up, and we're hoping when we do that year end accrual, that it's going to be uh, a positive number and hopefully a, a substantial number, you know, close to maybe a dollar. So we're hoping in that range when we compare it to the uh, previous year, uh, uh, positive uh, year end accrual. So next slide. Art. 
So this is um, looking at overall revenues, and you can see that the stair stepping up there with the uh, property tax collections in December and April. But overall, uh, uh, on a cash basis, we're about um, $1.7 million short where we were hoping to be. Um, <clears throat> a lot of that has to do with the GE and &E, um, revenue that we were expecting uh, for this fiscal year, um, about a million dollars. And that revenue, um, we haven't submitted the codes because the state hasn't uh, 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 finalized those programs yet. So we're waiting for 2018, 19, 19, 20, and 21. Um, so in the fiscal 21 2 budget, we had uh, projected $3 million of revenue. So here's a catch up plus 21, 22 is revenue. So roughly a million dollars a year. But now we're going to push this year's GEMT into next year as well. So they'll, they'll be. Um, we're hoping for four million dollars of GPT revenue next year. And I did talk to the district's uh, consultants, AP Triton, on the GE revenue, as well as the, your uh, billing uh, company, Whitman. And they're both fairly confident that these amounts will materialize in fiscal 21 22 because that GEMT program, as we know it, uh, is supposedly to end uh, December 31st. And it's going to be replaced with a, a, a different uh, intergovernmental transfer type program, the IGT program. Um, so they're hoping to get all of those uh, GEMT items cleared up uh, the next year. So I'm fairly confident that all we're doing is we're pushing this million dollars that we didn't get in 21, uh, 2021 into 2022. Um, in addition, there's quite a bit of uh, fees that, that, that go along with the GEMT rep. And our agreement with the state is that the district will um, put the money, the uh, administrative fees for this program, and then collect those from the participating agencies. Uh, however, those that collection of the revenue of participating agencies is dependent upon their receiving the GEMT revenue. So, as we receive the GPMT revenue, we'll also receive the um, reasonable uh, fees that the district has paid in the past. And those have been averaging about, uh, Ron, I think about 600000 $600, a year is what we're expecting to get uh, reimbursed. So that could be another $1.2 million or so coming in in addition to the GPMT revenue. So I'm confident that all of this will be made up next, next fiscal year. Next slide, Art. Okay, this is a look at salaries and benefits. Um, you see actual about 198 million. Uh, the budget was about 196. Per, um, we had uh, higher overtime costs and workers' compensation costs came in right toward the uh, end of the year. Uh, the majority of, of uh, costs um, are offset by other uh, savings and uh, services and supplies. Let me see on the next slide. So this is overall spending, and you can see the, the year end is pretty much right in line. Uh, budget 237 million, uh, seven on actual, 237, three on budget. So we're still finalizing numbers and closing out the year, but uh, overall target that we got here. Even Next slide. This is your slide that looks at uh, your ending uh, reserve balance throughout the year, and you can see it kind of follows that pattern of uh, property tax collection. So we're we're using funds until we get the, the property tax money in December, jumps back up, and gradually goes back down until we get that payment in April and then jumps, jumps back up again. It's kind of mirroring revenues and mirroring the cash balances of the district that we'll see. Um, glasses up. Now this is, um, you can see the June 30 ending balance there, about $32 million. That's on this cash basis that I was talking about. Um, so here we're at about a 4% reserve. 
So this is without that GEMT revenue that I was talking about, the couple of dollars. Um, I just want to make sure the board understands that this is as of a point in time, and as we shift that revenue into next uh, fiscal year, we're going to end up next fiscal year probably above the 15% target that we reached for. And I'm confident that will we'll, uh, be there at the next fiscal year. In fact, it's a little higher. It should be closer to, I'm guessing, about 15.5% uh, in the reserve balance. Okay. Okay. Next slide. This is just tracking uh, your cash balances throughout the year. Again, as I mentioned, this pattern is the uh, tax collection. So we're, we're using cash, uh, you know, through the first part of the year until December. And then we get that property tax money, builds the cash balances back up, draw that down through uh, March, and then it goes back up in April. So as of June 30 of uh, 21, we're at about 50, $59 million in cash uh, to where we were last year. You can see the little note on the bottom there is after we were funded. So that's the funding between those property tax rate kids. Next slide up. It's always a fun one to look at. This is your um, OPEB uh, trust fund you have with CalPERS as of June 30 of 21. It's almost $70 million. So just making very, very, very good progress. Out of that $70 million, uh, about 24 million is uh, investment earnings. Um, so about a third, over a third of the balance um, has come from those investment earnings. So um, they've been doing, CalPERS has been doing a job with investing uh, these funds. You can see the total contributions of about $46 million there, and the rest uh, representing investment earnings. Um, when the district has its actuarial valuation done, uh, retiree medical um, liability, those are done every two years. The last one was done June 30 of 19. At that time, the district was about 17% funded. Um, the valuation, since they're every two years, they project what the liabilities are at the end of each fiscal year. And uh, based on the uh, projected back of June 30th, 21, of the liability associated with the benefit, right, uh, is, would be about 26% funded. So in that two year period, you moved from 17 to 26%. And that just shows the discipline the district has in making those contributions uh, and staying on, on schedule to uh, full, full funding. So your next valuation will be as of June 30th, 21, but you won't see that. The actuaries uh, won't complete that till probably the first part of uh, 22, maybe December 21, January 22, sometime in that time frame. You'll get a better read on where, just, where you are in terms of funding. Next slide. Right? So uh, summary for uh, year into June 30th, 21, as I mentioned, 237 million uh, cash basis on general fund revenues. It's about $2 million less than what was budgeted. Advanced next. So we have probably in the order of two to $3 million of uh, GEMT uh, related revenues that will be into next fiscal year um, to make up for that. Uh, general fund expenditures, 238 million. That's about $800,000 less um, uh, overall than was uh, budgeted. Um, general fund set of about $1 million. Again, this is on a, a cash basis I'm talking about. So the um, uh, accrual for medic revenues could could offset that and write that back up to where, to where it should be or bring the district in balance for last year. And so with all the expected adjustments that we're looking at, our estimated reserve would be about $34 million. But as I mentioned, we're right now at about $32 million. But again, it's a timing issue. Those revenue be uh, recovered next fiscal year and we we'll end up fiscal year 21-22 about 15 to 15 and a half percent in terms of the reserve balance. So I think that's pretty much the same on target. 
where the district can be. And with that, uh, take any questions that you might have on the financial report. Questions, just a, just a statement from the other side that I um, we'll appreciate us being able to present the information and, and be able to maintain that reserve component. It's, it just seems really important to me and it, given the vagaries of the economy, I'm, I'm very impressed with it. Thank you. And I know the uh, staff is uh, impressed on me in the last months, the, the importance of maintaining that, uh, that uh, reserve at the, the level that the, the, the board has outlined. It hasn't gone some, it hasn't gotten lost on the staff. <laughs> Moving then to uh, two presentation item two, final budget uh, 2021-22, and once again CFO Kim Kimbra. Thank you, uh, Director Rosale. And again, I'll turn to Bart to pull up the presentation. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, I'm asking to do something too. No, no. <laughs> so you uh, you adopted the. Uh, Preliminary budget. Now we've gone through and done some fine tuning uh, to get to the uh, final budget. There's been a whole lot of changes. And we'll kind of walk through what we captured um, today. Thank you, Art. So um, again, uh, on June 10, the, the board adopted. Your uh, preliminary budget for fiscal year 2022 it was essentially balanced um, with uh, measures and transfers out equal to uh, revenues and transfers in. It was a slight surplus of about $200,000. Um, and now the final budget, um, we received the property tax information from um, uh, assessed valuation, I should say. And that was uh, represented an increase of about 5.1%. We had projected 4% in the budget. If you recall from earlier discussions, that 1% of property tax translates to something like $7 million. We had that 1.7, and then you also see um, uh, property tax revenue from the former redevelopment agencies. And, uh, Pass through and clean up revenue. So that another couple hundred thousand. So all told, about 1.9 million more you know, property tax revenue than what we had initially in the budget. So, um, all, um, and we'll look at some of these numbers uh, later, but overall increase uh, general fund revenue about 2.3 million. Again, the bulk of that being the property tax revenue. Um, General fund expenditures uh, and transfers out uh, went out $488,000. So uh, uh, net positive in about 1.8 million. Uh, so the uh, estimated reserve balance again was 34 million. And we just talked about that. They may drop to, to 2 million and then we would add an additional uh, two or 3 million and onto the revenues for 21, 22. To come out to about where we thought we were going to be at that 15% uh, reserve level. And again, I think it could be a little higher than that, 15% or so. so. Next slide. Okay, you want to just uh, kind of continue through these boxes are going to pop up on this. Uh, there you go. So that first one is just looking at overall revenues of $240 million compared to um, the 2021 year. So revenues overall about $13 million from last fiscal year to uh, this um, year we're in now. Next slide. Uh, overall labor costs uh, at $204 million, so about $5.4 million higher in uh, fiscal 2021. Um, overall expenditures at 241 million. It's about a $10 million uh, increase in spending. 
and then you can see the net transfer activity down below 9.6 million coming in, 6.2 million going out um, for a net uh, surplus of about um, three and a half million dollars. And then you can see that overall change in fund balance. One more, Art, thank you. It's uh, $2 million. Again, that's that uh, $2 million from the uh, preliminary budget plus the $1.8 million in, uh, net uh, uh, increase um, from the that we talked about. This is a uh, slides I was going over with the chief. He said he can't wait until we get past that dip. In, uh, One more year as it dips to the <laughs> We'll only be looking at uh, we'll only be looking at the increases. But this shows you overall um, property taxes compared to overall revenues, and you can see how the other revenues have kind of grown over time. Uh, pick up, uh, you know, for this kind of dip in property tax revenue there that happened during the recession. So the district had to, you know, get creative, and uh, that's when. Saw the GEMT programs, IGT programs, those sort of things come in and start uh, making up for uh, some of that uh, lost property tax revenue. We had good steady growth from about 2013 on. Um, hopefully that continues. And, you know, I had some discussions this afternoon with the chief about some fairly significant activity going on um, both in uh, Citrus Heights and, and Cordova. That, that, that should benefit the district, uh, you know, maybe in the 24 months down the road there. So hopefully that tax revenue will pick up even further. The next slide. Okay, this is just an overall look at uh, total revenues projected for next fiscal years. You can see taxes there at $175 million, representing about 70%. District's revenue, the charges for services at uh, $58 million. Uh, it's a healthy number, 23% of uh, projected revenues. It's primarily the medic uh, related uh, transport revenue, GEMTs, and uh, that, those um, transit related revenues. You have uh, intergovernmental. Um, uh, the other important thing here is that other transfers added at 9.6 million. Uh, 9.4 million of that is the uh, IGT program. I know I have some discussions with the chief about the uh, vulnerability of that IGT revenue and the need to maybe look at some options for that uh, uh, for in case you had to replace that um, revenue. Okay, next slide. Um, in that, uh, again, in uh, $240 million of projected uh, revenue, um, overall about a $13 million increase, and the bulk of that being um, property taxes at $7.5 million, and charges for services at $5.3 million, and in that $5.3 million is that catch-up for EMT uh, prior years. But we really haven't built into this yet the additional reimbursement from the other agencies. I mentioned about $1 million. And um, there'll also be another probably $6,000 for fiscal 2122 as well. So it could be another you know, $1.8 million or so of uh, uh, additional personal fees from the other agencies. Because again, the district has paid this money to the state entitled to receive that back from the participating agencies. Uh, again, the net, I'm sorry, um, the net IGT uh, is for 9.4 million brings the, the total between those two to about 250 million. So fairly substantial operation you have going here. Um, general fund expenditures and other uses, uh, you see the bulk of that is per cost, 82.4%, uh, 204 million. You have services and supply for about 33 million. Um, it's the next largest category, so keep everybody uh, uh, 
you know, in the right proper PPE and with all the uh, proper equipment. Um, taxes, licenses, and debt sort of, we'll get into uh, a little more detail on that. And then operating transfers out of $6 million. It's primarily to uh, capital fund and to pay uh, debt service on the various obligations that the district has. So next slide. So the uh, two or four million in the labor budget is uh, it represents an increase of uh, about five dollars compared to uh, fiscal 2021. And uh, just point out that includes um, funding for all authorized positions. So the wages, uh, bonus wages and benefits increased by about five million dollars because we assume all positions are going to be uh, funded. Uh, there's also about six million dollars in there for the increases in re required pension contributions, OPEP contributions, and um, medical uh, costs uh, for uh, current. And since we're assuming all positions are funded, we lower the overtime budget uh, by about six million dollars because you wouldn't maintain the same overtime budget and assume all positions are, are full. Part of that overtime is going to cover for those vacant positions. So if, if we get in here and we see that we're not able to fill those positions, then we'll shift that money for these and benefits in the overtime. Next slide. I mentioned services and supplies budget uh, at 33 million. So it's about a four and a half million dollar increase uh, compared to, um, I'm sorry, that should 2021. Um, we, the board's well aware you had about a one half million dollar increase in your um, property and liability insurance uh, uh, this year. There's also about a $600,000 increase in the uh, regional uh, communications center costs and uh, that you share their uh, participating agencies there it's about a 300 in these are just to highlight the increases about 300,000 for uh, safety clothing uh, supplies and other services related uh, to the firefighter academy and about a 300,000 piece for uh, GEMT uh, administration and again the district will look at that reimbursed to them through the uh, other participating agencies. Next slide. So in the uh, debt service assessment and other contributions, that's budgets about $4.7 million. The uh, components there are um, uh, 1.9 million um, a set uh, paid to the county for property tax administration. Uh, it's an on, ongoing charge. Uh, 2.2 million related to um, uh, the GT uh, QUAP program. The district also receives QUAP revenue to offset that. And then uh, there were also uh, reduced uh, debt service payments uh, due to the refinancing of the lease revenue bonds. So we saved about uh, close to $500,000 this current fiscal year by not making that second payment. That would have been uh, May of 22. We, we push that into the next, next year. Uh, general fund transfers out again, uh, uh, $6 to uh, capital facilities fund and the grants fund. And that was about 5,000 less. Uh, I'm sorry, that's the reduction <laughs> for the uh, uh, savings on lease revenue bonds. And then uh, 9.4 million uh, net per N from the I, uh, IGT uh, program, which is the same as uh, this year 2021. So we're assuming that's going to continue on at, at, at the same level. In the uh, capital facilities fund, uh, we budgeted about $9 million in the capital outlay. You can see some of the larger items here, uh, three type one engines, uh, two type engines, uh, one truck, um, three type five engines, and a, a water tender. And then there's a, a number of other uh, uh, capital uh, improvements uh, in addition to those. 
the grants fund, there's about $2 million uh, budgeted there to uh, finish up uh, several open grants that the uh, district has. And then the lease properties fund, uh, pretty much the revenues and expenses are balanced there at about uh, one, one into 1.1 1. 1 million, both in um, lease revenue coming in and uh, projected uh, expenditures to keep those uh, uh, properties up. And the development impact fee fund, there's about uh, $5 million that are budgeted to station 60. And that's kind of a recap of the final budget, pretty close to the preliminary budget, uh, not, not a whole lot of difference, although we have some um, added uh, property tax revenue to be discussed in these. And with that, I'd be glad to answer any questions. Thank you. Appreciate it. You're welcome. The uh, next meeting of the Finance and Audit Committee is uh, scheduled for the 23rd at 5.30 p.m. here in uh, this room. And um, the agenda items are to be determined. Seeing no further business, this meeting is adjourned.